All right, everybody, we're grateful for you joining us today, and we are excited about what God is doing today. And so a couple of weeks ago, we started a new experience here at this 930 virtual experience hour uh, in which we go to the shepherd's table. Uh, and I've been chasing some college students around all week long to get them to the shepherd's table. And I'm excited about what will be revealed at the shepherd's table. And after we get done with the shepherd's table, we'll be right back here for the preaching lab. Is there anybody excited about a word? Anybody ready to worship today? Anybody ready to give God some glory today? I'm looking forward to an awesome worship experience. And so let us get ourselves ready to go to the shepherd's table. One thing that I am continually seeking God for is that he revealed to me new ways in which he would have me to serve. And so that's why this shepherding journey uh, has been so transformational, so life changing uh, for me is because I now know that the Lord has called me, the Lord has called you, the Lord has called us to serve in the role of a shepherd. And when I think about shepherding, what I'm really drawn to is relationship, us being into growing into better relationship with the Lord uh, so that we are in turn able to connect with and grow into better relationship with his people so that in turn we are able to lead his people and shepherd his people into themselves beginning to grow into greater relationship with the Lord. And in this type of relationship, so often I'm so I'm so cognizant of the things that I'm doing because I really believe that my walk has greater impact than my talk. So I want people to be able to see what it looks like for me to be in real, authentic relationship with the Lord. I want pe people to be able to see what it means to be obedient and to be able to see how obedience then begins to reveal the manifestations of God's promises. And so what I'm really excited about in this shepherding journey and learning how to be a shepherd is the opportunity that I then have to walk alongside people as they begin to discover their greater and walk alongside people as they begin to walk in all that the Lord has called them to be. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you this morning. We want to say thank you first and foremost, God. We have a long list of things that we can thank you for. But first of all, let us thank you for the breath in our bodies and the chance at a, another day of life. Oh God, we thank you for the blessing that is our families and the roofs over our heads and the provision that you provided to us thus far. Oh God, God, we thank you for the covering that you've given us and the o obedience that you've given us. God, we thank you for the direction and the instructions, oh God, over our lives. God, we're coming right now asking that you would continue to help us be good sheep, oh God. God, that you would help us to stay within the fold, that you would help us stay up under our covering, oh God. God, we ask that you would help us to be obedient sheep, oh God, that we would learn to keep ourselves and to keep one another within the covering of the fold, God. We're asking a special blessing over the shepherd, God, and all of us who seek to be shepherds. God, prepare our hearts and prepare our minds for the things that you would have us to do, God. Prepare us to receive your instructions, to discern your voice, oh God, and then to obey, God. God, we're asking that you would help us to develop other shepherds on this journey, oh God. God, that we may do your will and that you may have your way in our lives, Lord. God, we're asking for a special anointing over the word this morning, God, that it would seep into our hearts and settle into our spirits and that it may do something new inside each and every one of us, God, that it would change the way that we're living in a way that would glorify you, O oh God. God, some of us stand in need of prayers that we have not spoken out loud, God. You know those too, God. We're asking that you would do what you do, God, in the cover of darkness and in the brightness of the light, God. We're asking that you would be God all by yourself and that we would let you drive this boat, God. God, we're asking that you would help us to surrender to your will and to your way. We're asking for forgiveness for every time that we have diverted, that we have run away, that we have left the fold, God. We're asking for forgiveness for when we did not trust you the way that we should have, God because you have been mighty and you have been strong. You have been faithful and you have sent grace and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives, God. And for that, we also must thank you, God. 
We thank you for the covering that you've provided thus far, God, over our families, the things that you have kept away from us that we have not even seen, God. We thank you. We thank you for the direction that you're taking us in, God. And though the things may seem uh, too mountainous for us, God, we thank you for the preparedness that you're sending forth our way, God, right now, even though we don't see it. God, we thank you for the teaching that we've received thus far. We thank you for the lessons and the blessings. And this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Shepherd. Walking by faith was not walking with my eyes, as the shepherd left for the one when he could have just kept 99. Where ego led me stray, and my pride could have brought on demise. Though I walked through the valley, he never left my side. The shepherd is what they call him, selfless, one who guides. Just follow me, he say, as the herd move with strides. They say faith comes by hearing, and once you hear it, you must apply. Oh, faithful servant you are, to it I must oblige. Now it's my turn to search, it's my turn to try. To gather the sheep I can shepherd, and use the Lord's strength as my rod. See, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's on Murray's little land, in the direction of where I'm called. Everybody, again, welcome to the Shepherd's Table, and we're indeed excited today. Uh, because I've been chasing college students around all day long to get to the shepherd's table. And now I finally have been able to get them to sit down with me and talk about hearing the voice of the Lord. Uh, nothing really happens in life unless we learn how to respond to the voice of the Lord. How do you feel, how well do you feel that you're able to discern what God is saying to you? I think that now, um, I'm a little older. I think that, you know, in the beginning of my college career, I did not, I wasn't able to discern what God was telling me. Um, I actually think that I did, I won't say the complete opposite of what he was telling me, but I didn't listen to what he was telling me. And I did what I thought he was telling me. And, um, I think now that I've gotten a little bit older and I've gone through, you know, the brunt of college. I'm in my last semester and I'm about to graduate. I've learned how to listen to what God is telling me and why it's different from what I tell myself, what is different from what my parents tell me, what my friends tell me, and what the world is telling me. Um, I think I've gotten to a point where I can look at or read situation and be like, okay, Grace, God is not, he don't want you to go that way. He wants you to go this way. And you gotta go that way instead. Um, it's a little difficult though it is it's, it's difficult. What's difficult um it's difficult to discern sometimes between what you're telling yourself and what god is telling you or what you're what you interpret his words to be may not be what he actually meant and i think that's the real difficult part for me and a lot of people my age is that will hear something and we'll think with all the knowledge that we had in our 20 something years of living and be like, okay, that's the best option. And in reality, it's not. Um, it's not exactly what God was telling us, it's how we thought he was, what he what we thought he was telling us. Wow. And so let me let me ask this question. Uh, I keep on saying discern the voice of God and not hear the voice of God because that's how it happens. You mm -hmm. haven't actually heard with your ears the voice of God, have you? No. It's been more of a feeling, right? Yes. More of a thought, more of an urge. Yes. Uh, and, and so the times in which you really know that you heard from the Lord, was it confusing what the Lord said or was it confusing as to how to do what the Lord said? <laughs> how to do. <laughs> um, so it wasn't confusing what he said, it was confusing to figure out how to do what he said. Yeah, it, it's more so confusing on figuring out what he is exactly telling or how I should exactly do it. Like, like, yeah, let me say that. It's it's more so me figuring out how to answer what he's telling me um, instead of just hearing what he's saying and going with it, I guess. Is the voice of God confusing or is it very clear? Like what God is saying to you, has it ever been confused? 
And when I say confused, and confusing in the sense that you didn't understand what it was. Maybe confused in given the circumstance, you want me to do what? I can't do this. Why would you want me to do that? That might be confusing. But what the Lord is telling you, has that ever been unclear? Like, what do you think, Lord? Uh, but has it ever been unclear, the instruction or what it is he's saying? The instruction has never been unclear. But as far as figuring out the path to take to follow his instruction, that's confusing. That's confusing. Okay. So that's what I wanted to make sure that I understood too. Because I know for a fact that the voice of God is never confusing for me. It's, it's preach, do this, go here, say this, don't say this, sit down, be quiet, go, open up your mouth, do something. And that's never confusing. The confusing part is why and how why? and when. Yeah, right? Uh, and so that is what we have to understand about the voice of the Lord. It becomes confusing when we try to figure out how to do it. Now, when you try to do it, then have you ever found that God speaks more on it? Oh, he speak, he, he does speak more on it. When you try to do it, when you're ready to do it, you're on the path. And then something out the gate is like, oh, this is great for the path. It happens to me so many times on a daily basis. It happens to me when I'm in your sermon. A scripture came to me one day and I was like, oh, I need this for something. I screenshotted it. And I was like, right. yes, there we go, God, thank you. I needed that. Right. So the more you try to do it, the more God speaks to you about it, right? Absolutely. Good. You're helping everybody, right? And I just needed to make sure that these weren't Christopher Paul Burnett <laughs> remarks, uh, but these were actually scriptural and that this is exactly how God works. Uh, and so when we're trying to discern the voice of the Lord, we have to understand that when he speaks, it's not a confusing, it's not a confusing statement. It's going to be very clear and concise. The confusion comes in when you bring your stuff into the conversation. And when you bring your stuff into the conversation, it gets confusing because you don't know how your stuff is supposed to move according to what it is that the Lord has said. But it's never confusing. And the more you try to do what the Lord has said, the more clarity and the more God speaks to you on that, right? Uh, and so this is where I need you all also to understand how this thing works. And so as you begin to think about uh, discerning the voice of the Lord, uh, when do you hear it the most? Hmm. Um, I think ironically, well, not really ironically, I think most people feel this way or behave this way is that I hear it the most when I am going through the most. Um, it's when I decide to actually listen. Like, it, he'll always be there, but I'm deciding to actually pay attention when I'm going through things. So you hear him most when you're going through the most. Yes. I like yep. it. Uh, and so you're doing the most because you don't want to talk to him until you're going through the most. Uh, and so when we begin to look at that, uh, I pray that we all learn, as you just said, that the Lord is always trying to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. But we cause ourselves the most pain and confusion because we choose not to listen to what it is he's saying. And so mm -hmm. today, as we begin to think about the voice of the Lord, uh, I thank Grace for helping me to articulate the fact that his voice is never confusing. But how we do what his voice is requiring of is the confusing part. Yeah. And so we have to learn how to be in communication with God daily as opposed to waiting on trouble to come to then get into the presence of the Lord to hear the voice because when you are going through the most what do you have to do then to get to the point of hearing the Lord don't you have to work a little bit harder then you, you got to yes that's when you really have to make yourself decide all right you have to stop you got to stop what you're doing right now and just listen um yeah you got to I think that's when, when when you're going through the most, it's the hardest to actually listen, though. And that's that's where the issue lies, is that you tend to only listen when you're going through the most, but that's also the hardest time to listen. So, yeah. All right. And so uh, when you hear the Lord speaking to you, commanding you, Kiara, do this, Kiara, don't do this. What does that sound, what does that feel like to you? Um, sometimes it's challenging, 
you, sometimes it's shown the Lord is watching me, guiding me. He's my friend, my buddy, my pal. He just wants the best for me. So it's not always easy to listen to him, but I understand why he says the things. I always understand after I do them. Um, that's what it sounds like. You know, he's guiding me. He's not pressuring me. He's like, you can do it. Don't do it. You know what I'm about. So, you know, wow. That, so it's not a pressuring voice. It's not an aggressive voice. No. But it is a, a very present voice. So let me ask this. Do you hear the voice with your ears? Do you feel the voice with your spirit? How, help us understand how do you feel this voice? What happens? How do you discern the voice of the Lord? Is it something that whispers in your ears? Something you feel in your gut? Something you think about? What is the voice of God for you? It's a gut feeling for me. It's a gut feeling for me, especially because I take the time to, I write letters to the Lord every night. I write them about my day, what I want, what was troubling me, where does he think I should go? And then when I'm done writing my letter, I read it over again. And whatever sticks out to me from what I wrote, I know that's him talking to me to either let it go or pursue that, what I wrote about. Wow. So you are, that's awesome. So you're writing your prayers out uh, to the Lord. Uh, and then as you write your prayers out to the Lord, then whatever sticks out to you as you reread those prayers, you then discern as though God is responding to you there. Uh, yeah. And you spend more time finding direction from those things. Yeah. That's awesome. That, that, that's awesome. So it's definitely a gut feeling for you. It's a, it's a gut feeling for me. Right. Uh, and so it's not the Lord cracked the sky and lightning flashed and this big booming voice that speaks. It is a gut feeling. It's now, a how, gut. How, how long ago did you begin to trust that gut feeling and actually equate that to being God? Um, I've always trusted the Lord, always trusted him. He saved my mother's life. I trusted him then. I trusted it more now when I first, when I first got to college, I was not happy. I was homesick. I missed my friends. I trusted him more during COVID when he took all of them away. And seeing how I transformed after that, I'm like, oh, there he is. He knew what he was doing. I trust him so more now with what his plans are for me. Wow. Okay. So has anybody ever talked to the voice of the Lord? Or do you just have to figure that out yourself? Oh, that's God. I mean, I people have definitely tried to teach you how to hear him, when to hear him, and like knowing that you have to hear him. But mm -hmm. on, that is something you have to teach yourself because everyone's God is going to talk differently to them because he didn't make us the same. So like right. I said, God is my buddy, my pal. He's not pressuring me because he's calling me because that's me. Please don't yell at me, God. I can't take yelling. I can't take yelling from regular people. But like right. other people, he may need to yell for. So you always you have to figure out how you hear God. So if you were to teach, you would turn on your TikTok, you would turn on your Instagram, you would turn on your Facebook. How would you teach somebody <laughs> the voice of the Lord? I would teach someone find a moment of stillness throughout each of your days. Ooh. A moment of stillness where you're doing nothing to take time and reflect on what you want to happen tomorrow what you want to happen the next day to be complete open and honest about yourself and in that stillness moment really try it and listen to what's out there mm -hmm. it may be a gut feeling maybe something in your brain it might be a whisper for you whatever the case just use that moment of stillness to hear him what happened when you started trusting that gut feeling but when i started trusting my gut feeling the sky like things started looking better for me Mm -hmm. I stopped. I was I was scared to trust him. It's always scary, and it's always scary to keep trusting him. But the skies, the, my life got better. I got out of my depressive episode. I started loving college. Like I was like, okay, you were right. All right, Lord, I see you. There we go. So uh, as you grow and mature, wouldn't it be nice to just make sure that you stay in good relationship, real relationship with the Lord daily? Yes, I I wish now that I am about to graduate, I wish that I would have never, I guess, put on pause my church relationship um, like it was when I was in high school and when I was actually 
physically back home. I was there all the time. I had no other, no other deterrent from church. And then I became my own deterrent. And then once I got a little bit older, I started realizing like, if only I would have stayed where I should have been. But the good part is you always have an opportunity to speak unto the Lord and the Lord is always trying to speak to you. And so if you'll always remember that the Lord is trying to speak to you and always respond when the Lord is speaking, uh, then things go much better for you. And so I look forward to things going much better for you uh, as you learn to discern the voice of the Lord. And I thank you for taking your time uh, out of your busy, busy schedule. I promise you all these college students are busier uh, than a grown person with 15 jobs. Uh, but I thank you for taking the time to join us today uh, and helping us to understand a little bit better what it means to discern the voice of the Lord. Thank you for coming to the Shepherd's Table and we look forward to seeing you soon. All right, all right. And so let's get over now to the preaching lab and let's talk about what the Lord is saying in response to us discerning the voice of the Lord. All right, everybody, welcome to the preaching lab. And we are indeed excited about what God is trying to teach us about discerning the voice of the Lord. And so if you're here, if you're with us, uh, then as we enter into the preaching lab to hear a word from the Lord, I just want to know, is there anybody that needs a word from the Lord? If you need a word from the Lord, then raise those hands wherever you are. Raise those hands wherever you are. Uh, Lord, you see those hands and these people are in indeed suggesting that they need a word and you know what they need to hear you know what you're trying to do you know how you're trying to lead guide and direct them and so lord speak now to those hands which are raised that hand in the kitchen that hand right here in the sanctuary that hand in the bathroom that hand that's still in the bed that hand that's riding down the highways and byways wherever the hands are raised we need you to inhabit that place and speak now lord as only you can. And so now, Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we find that word this today. We find that word today uh, in the preaching lab in Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, beginning at the first verse, and it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it. And he said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am send me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so now as we get ourselves ready for this word, I think I ought to tell you uh, that Isaiah is about to discern the voice of the Lord. And as we talk about discerning the voice of the Lord, uh, one of the things that is most important to understand about this situation is that even though the text reveals a conversation and it suggests that Isaiah is actually talking to the Lord, we must understand that this is in fact a vision or a dream in which Isaiah is experiencing uh, everything that he is feeling and discerning all 
although not a physical voice, uh, it is overwhelming him and it equates to him hearing the voice of the Lord. And so I believe there are times in life where God allows us to have experiences that overwhelm us. Uh, for the express purpose of getting our attention, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, that which we experience is so overwhelming uh, that it is unforgettable, everlasting, and absolutely real to us. And as we look at the text, Isaiah is doing his best to replay the experience of being in God's presence and hearing his voice back to us. We don't actually know where Isaiah physically is when he hears the voice, uh, but he tells us, I heard the voice, and when I heard it, it was in the year uh, that the king died, in the year that King Isaiah died. And king Isaiah was uh, um, the king for 52 years, and the Bible says he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but King Isaiah died a tragic death. We know this because the Bible tells us that when King Isaiah was strong at heart, his heart was lifted up and to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord uh, his God by entering into the temple and burning incense on the altar of incense. And in response, God struck Isaiah down with leprosy, and he was an isolated leper unto his death. So to say in the year King Isaiah died is to say a lot. Uh, it is to say in the year a great and wise king died, but it is also to say uh, that in the year a great and wise king who had a tragic end died. And Isaiah had great reason at this point to be discouraged and disillusioned at the death of King Isaiah uh, because a great king had passed away and because his life ended tragically. So for Isaiah to say, this is, uh, I saw the Lord in the year that King Isaiah died, is to say I was conflicted about the good and bad and how and why the Lord would do and allow certain things to happen to somebody who made a mistake but also did what the Lord said and it's at that time that I saw the Lord. So here we find out that Isaiah perceives that he is having an experience in the presence of the Lord. And Isaiah first response to the experience is that I am unworthy to see the Lord. Which means that often when we really find ourselves in the presence of the Lord, that which is not right about us is discerned and conviction sets in, which is a very uncomfortable space to be in, and one in which many of us try to get out of as soon as possible, but it is in the experience that God wants us to understand that if I ever convict you, uh, then I will provide means for resurrection and restoration, uh, which is why you should never rush out of the presence of the Lord because you don't like how you feel or because you're uncomfortable there. For the story goes on to say that as he stayed in the presence of the Lord, that Isaiah, Isaiah then heard the voice of the Lord. And this tells me before we actually hear the Lord, we find ourselves in an experience in which we feel different things going on. And through those feelings, we hear the voice of the Lord. And the voice was very clear and the voice was very concise. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And because of what? Isaiah felt he responded to the Lord, here I am, send me. And ultimately, all that God is waiting on to change your life is a response to what he is saying to your life. An acknowledgement that you recognize that you are hearing from the Lord. And I need everybody that's listening right now to understand whether you know it is the voice of the Lord or not. All God is waiting on you to do is try to discern his voice and respond. If you can try to discern it, if it feels 
feels like the Lord uh, then respond like it's the Lord and your life can very well change right about now you feel something and it feels like the Lord and then you need to start moving like it's the Lord you need to start responding uh, because here it is Isaiah felt like it was the Lord and so he said I am undone uh, he started responding as though it was the Lord he started responding as though the Lord was trying to talk to him and I need everybody right now that thinks the Lord is trying to talk to you that feels like the Lord is saying something to you that feels like the Lord is pushing you that feels like the Lord is urging you that feels like the Lord gave you the thought that feels like the Lord is moving you in that direction I need you to go ahead and say Lord I feel like you're talking to me because when you feel the Lord talking to you the Lord is getting ready to do something for you that you didn't even recognize that you didn't even know was possible and he's about to rearrange some things and I need some folk right now to start inventorying everything that's going on in your life and whatever feels like the Lord I need you to say Lord is that you whatever sounds like the Lord I need you to say Lord is that you and while you're questioning it I need you just to go ahead and stop questioning it and say Lord I'm trying to respond to you and I feel like you said and I feel like I see you and I feel like I'm experiencing you and when you acknowledge the Lord then the Lord starts moving uh, that's why the Lord says I inhabit the praises of my people when you acknowledge the Lord then the Lord starts showing up and when you acknowledge the Lord then the Lord starts showing out and I just wish right about now uh, that the people of God would stop acting like you don't know the voice of the Lord and start trying to respond to whatever it might be I feel like the Lord is speaking I'm responding I feel like the Lord is saying I'm responding and just like when you hear your mama's voice it don't matter if it was her or not you come running and say did you call me? I thought I heard your voice. Because you just want to make sure that you're in the right place at the right time and that you're not messing up something. And so it might not be the Lord, but you better be clear. Lord, is that you? I just want to make sure that I'm in accord with what you're saying. But most of the time, it is the Lord, and that means the Lord is trying to do something in your life. And so, what we learn about the voice of the Lord uh, and the Lord's mission and goal for his communication with us is that God speaks because he wants to change how we see and feel about things. I need everybody just to stay right there. Why is God speaking? I need you to understand God is not speaking to keep you from doing certain things, to, to mess up your life. Uh, to ruin your fun, uh, to make you so holy that you can't do anything that is uh, fulfilling to you. God is not trying to control you like that. Uh, somebody say he's not trying to control me like that. Uh, but God is trying to bless you like you've never been blessed before. Uh, and I need you to understand that God is not speaking to restrict you. God is not speaking uh, to rob you of anything. God is speaking to bless you. And I need everybody to start understanding that when God God speaks, he's trying to bless you. Uh, when God speaks, he's trying to make something happen in your life. Uh, and I need you to understand, the quicker you respond, the quicker you can get to the blessings that God has for you. Uh, what we call, that is attachment. Uh, the quicker you respond, and the quicker you do what God tells you to do, uh, the more that's going to come and be attached to you. Uh, and so right now, what we have to understand is that when God speaks, God is trying to change how you see and feel about things so you can get to a better place in life. And so there's three things that God is really trying to do when he speaks. One, he wants to change how you see him. Two, he wants to change how you see yourself. And three, he wants to change how you see your ministry. I need to go back through those. One, he wants to change how you see him. Two, he wants to change how you see yourself. And three, he wants to change how you see your ministry. Now, check it out in the text. Uh, number one, uh, he wants to change how you see him. Uh, and so what that then means is God speaks because he needs us to understand that we can't quantify or designate or put God in a box. For Isaiah is in the midst of confusion. Uh, but the Bible says even in the midst of not understanding how to feel about what was going on in the year that King Isaiah died, he saw 
called God high and lifted up, glowing in splendor and holiness, not bought down by the drama of what was going on in the year that King Uzziah died. And so often God just has to speak to let us know that no matter what's going on in your life, I'm still high and lifted up. I need somebody right now to understand that just because you're having issues in life, the Lord is speaking because he needs you to see that I'm still high and lifted up. And just because things are not going the way you wish, and just because things are not happening the way you want, and just because things are not doing what you thought they would do, God needs you to understand I'm still high and lifted up. And just because you're having health issues, and just because you might be having financial issues, and just because you don't understand what may be going on in and around your atmosphere, God wants you to know in that same space, I'm still high and lifted up. And even though your children might be acting up, and even though your job might be doing something, and even though your stuff is not right, God wants you to know I'm still high and lifted up. And even though uh, you might not be feeling good about yourself. The Lord still wants you to know that I am still high and lifted up. My position does not change because of your atmospheric pressure. Uh, the Lord wants you to know I'm still high and lifted up. And just because you might be going through doesn't mean that my position changes. And just because you might not be feeling what you're going through doesn't mean that my position changes. And just just because you have some challenges uh, and the people attached to you are being challenged uh, does not mean uh, that my position changes. Uh, and, and just because somebody dies in your life uh, doesn't mean that I'm not still high and lifted up. Uh, and so I need you to be able to see me. I need you to change how you see me. So when the Lord needs to change how we see him, the Lord says, hello. Hello, I need to speak to you. I just want you to know I'm still high and lifted up. And so when the Lord speaks, I need you to understand he's trying to change how you see him. Why in the world would you allow this to happen? Hello, I'm still high and lifted up. Why in the world is this going on? Hello, I'm still high and lifted up. Lord, I thought that this would be gone a long time ago. I'm still high and lifted up. I'm speaking to you. Stop looking at everything else and look at me. I'm high and lifted up. So not only does he speak because he wants to change how we see him, he speaks because he wants to change how we see ourselves. He speaks because I need you to see yourself differently. Isaiah, you should not and should no longer be undone. And you should no longer think of yourself as a man of unclean lips. You should no longer define yourself by the people that you've been amongst. Because Isaiah says in the space that he's in with the Lord that I'm undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I hang around people who have unclean lips. Uh, but the Lord says to him, I, I'm speaking to you now because I need you to change how you see yourself. Uh, you should no longer see yourself as one that's undone. And you should no longer see yourself or Think of yourself as a man of unclean lips, and you should no longer define yourself uh, by the people in which you used to hang around, but you should now see yourself uh, as one that's been touched by God. Uh, because when Isaiah gets into the presence of the Lord and he begins to converse with the Lord, he says, I am a man undone, and I have unclean lips, and I've been around people who have unclean lips, and all of a sudden, the seraphim uh, that was flying uh, with his eyes covered in his feet covered, uh, uh, moves to the altar and grabs a coal uh, and now goes and touches his mouth uh, uh, and says, you uh, are now able to say something uh, different than what you said and, and now you should no longer think of yourself as undone uh, and you should never think of yourself there. Uh, I need you to see yourself differently now and because 
because of that touch. You are no longer what you used to be. And God is trying to talk to somebody right now to help them understand. I know what has gone on. And I know what has gone down. But I'm speaking to you because that's about to change right about now. I'm getting your attention because what used to be and who used to hang out around you and who you used to hang out about is about to change right about now. And what used to be not right is about to change right about now because I'm speaking and I'm speaking because I need to change how you see yourself. You've now been touched by the Lord, which means I can't think of myself the same way because then I wasn't touched by the Lord. But now I've been touched by the Lord. And because I've been touched by the Lord, I walk differently and I move differently and I talk differently and I see things differently uh, because the Lord uh, has done something to me while I've been in his presence uh, and while he was talking to me, uh, he did something to me. Uh, has the Lord ever done something to you uh, while he's talking to you? Uh, the things that he said to you shook your very soul uh, and you understand I can't be the same way uh, that I used to be because the Lord is talking to me uh, and every now and then uh, God speaks to us uh, because he doesn't like the way we're moving and behaving uh, which is ultimately a result of the way we think about ourselves. And so God speaks to us because he says, I need to change how you think about yourself. But notice, Isaiah doesn't just offer up how he feels about himself. But in response to being in the presence of the Lord and discerning God's voice, he now is dealing with how he feels about himself. And I need you to understand when the Lord begins to speak and when the Lord begins to cultivate experiences in which he wants to speak to you, he's doing it because he needs you to understand. Not only do I need you to see me differently, I need you to see yourself differently. And God is allowing him to think differently now so he can move differently now. And I need somebody to understand when God begins to speak, that's because he's trying to change how you're moving. Because he needs you to move in accord with what he's about to do, not what has happened. And I need somebody to understand that's why you always need to be in communication with the Lord. Because despite what has happened, he can still move in a different way and move you to a different end. That's why when the three Hebrew boys went down into the fiery furnace, they didn't come out looking like what they've been through. And when God speaks, you won't look like what you've been through. You won't sound like what you've been through. You won't feel like what you've been through. Because the Lord is not worried about what you've been through. The Lord is trying to do something through you. And so I speak to you because I need you to move a certain kind of way. And so the Lord says, I speak to you because I need you to see me differently. And I need you to think of yourself differently, which then leads to you seeing your ministry differently. And I think I ought to tell you to hear that you have a ministry ought not sound strange to you. Every single one of us have a ministry. And every single one of us are called to be a shepherd, uh, which means uh, that the Lord says, if you love me, you have to feed my sheep, which means that we all have a ministry because at the end of the day, you can't really say that you're in relationship with the Lord and you don't love him. You can't say you're in relationship with the Lord and you don't know how to hear his voice. Uh, and so here it is. Uh, if we're going to be in relationship with him, then that means we have a ministry. And when God speaks, he's trying to change how you see your ministry. God, in the midst of this conversation with Isaiah, not only wants him to see me differently, God, he doesn't only want Isaiah to see himself differently, he wants him to see his ministry differently. So God says, I need someone to go for us. And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Which means, that if I am now going to move, I'm now moving on behalf of the Lord. I am now working for the Lord. Notice the Lord did not coerce Isaiah 
But Isaiah understood the assignment. Notice, God did not force Isaiah into the ministry. But Isaiah understood the assignment. Notice, God didn't say, you better do this or else. But Isaiah, because of what he felt in conversation with the Lord, was able to respond in a certain way that changed now how he saw his ministry, uh, which ultimately means Isaiah went from a moment of confusion to a moment of understanding of what he was supposed to do. And every now and then, I need you to understand, when you find yourself in that moment of confusion, God doesn't want you to stay there. That's why God is speaking. And when you are confused and you cannot hear the voice of the Lord, that means means you need to start doing something to your atmosphere because it is very clear to me now that when stuff gets confusing, God is trying to say something and God is trying to say something because he needs you to understand that I'm still high and lifted up and I need you to think differently about yourself so you can do something different in the space that you're in because I have ministry for you to do. I have something for you to say. I have people that I need you to affect. I have stuff that I need you to change. I have stuff I need you to speak to. I have people I need you to lift up. I have people that need encouragement. I need people that need to feel me through you. And so I need you to understand when I speak, I'm trying to get you to see something differently, which means God wants to speak to us so he can lead us and guide us to a place we didn't even know we could even be in the midst of uncertain times. And so when stuff goes on, God opens up his mouth. And when you start acting like you don't understand it's God, and when you start acting like I don't know if it's God talking to me, and when you get uncomfortable that God is bringing you into his presence, you miss out on what God is about to do that you didn't even know he could do. And so I need everybody to stop ignoring God and everybody to stop acting like you don't hear God. And I need everybody trying to respond to whatever you think God is saying, however it sounds and however it feels and wherever it shows up and wherever it comes, you need to understand that God is trying to do something for you because he has plans for your future. He has plans to prosper you. He has plans for your attachment. He has blessings with your name on it. He's trying to give you assignment that will save your life and that will bless your children and that will bless your children's children and that will bless the kingdom and that will save somebody from themselves and save somebody from this evil dark world. Somebody has to understand that God is speaking because he's trying to move through me. God is speaking because he's trying to bless somebody through me. God is speaking because he's trying to change my worship and my praise. God is speaking because he's trying to change what I feel and think about myself. God is speaking because he has some attachments for me and he needs me to know that God is real. God's not playing out here. God has an agenda and every morning his agenda is to bless some folk like they've never been blessed before. That's why the Bible says morning by morning new mercies I see. I wake up every morning and I understand great is thy faithfulness. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't need to do it, but he did. He shouldn't have done it, but he did. And he keeps on doing it over and over and over and over and over again because he needs you to know that I'm still high and lifted up. I'm doing it for my name's sake. I ain't going to let nobody play me. I am God and I have all control and there is nothing that's impossible for me. I need you to see that I'm still high and lifted up and I need you to understand because I'm still high and lifted up. I'm your God and I'm a good shepherd which means I'm coming to get you as my sheep. No, you can't stay in that depressed place. No, you can't stay in that hurting place. 
No, you can't stay in that downcast place. Uh, that's not who I created you to be. Uh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, I did what I did, and I said what I said, uh, and I created you in my image, and I have plans for you, uh, plans to prosper you, uh, and that's why uh, I am your shepherd, and you shall not want. Uh, and that is why uh, what they meant for evil, I'm still going to make work for your good. Uh, and that's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And that's why I give you chance after chance, uh, after chance after chance, after chance after chance, uh, because I know the plans I have for you, uh, and that's why I'm speaking, and I just wish somebody, somebody would just act like I'm talking to you. Somebody would just act like I'm talking to you. The Lord is talking to you. Ain't no sense in ignoring it. The Lord is talking to you. Respond. He's not trying to hurt you. He's not trying to block you. He's not trying to keep you from what it is that you want to do. He knows how to do that better than you know how to do that. And he knows what you're trying to get to more than you even know what you're trying to get to. So right now, God is talking. What is he saying? I don't have any earthly clue. But I know the goal of his conversation and communication with you. Which is why I'm telling you, you got to respond. And so right now, whatever it is that you think God is trying to say, I need you responding. The best response that we can give God at any time is a yes. Just a flat out yes. And the truth of the matter is whatever God says is very clear and concise. The only confusion is to how, why, and when. But what he's saying is not confusing at all. So if God is speaking right now, you're very clear on what it is he's saying. You might be unsure as to how to do it, why you need to do it, when you need to do it, what it is that he's trying to accomplish through you doing it. But I need you to understand you won't gain any clarity on that until you start responding appropriately. And so right now, I believe God is speaking to some of you and saying, now I want you in real authentic relationship with me. God is saying right now to you, I want to save your life. I want you to be in heaven with me. And he is waiting on you to respond with a yes. Are you saved? Are you sure no weapon formed against you will prosper because I'm going to heaven and I will spend eternity with him? If you don't have that assurance, God is speaking to you now and he's saying, are you ready to give me your life? And your response ought to be yes. And so we say, try Jesus. And we say, try St. Stephen's. We understand uh, that trying Jesus is what's going to change your life. So we also ask you to try St. Stephen's because trying St. Stephen's is what's going to help you to be obedient to that word in which you hear. For we are here to help you to become the shepherd that God wants you to be while we shepherd you to be obedient to that voice. And when you become obedient to that voice, you will get attachments that then you can shepherd. And when we are all shepherding the attachments that God wants us to have, that's when he says they'll see your good works and glorify me in heaven. And so right now we're praying for you uh, that if you don't have a church home, if you don't have a pastor, because we're really not trying to steal members. We don't want members. We want shepherds and we want folk that can affect the kingdom of God. We don't want people just to come and sit. We want to equip people to be disciples and to go ye therefore and make disciples of all ye nations which means we want you to respond to the voice of the Lord and be obedient so that we can continue to do that and see exactly what God is trying to do and it's not always easy. And so that's why he sends shepherds after his own heart and my name is Christopher Paul Burnett and I would love to be your pastor to walk with you and to talk with you and to lead you to places you didn't even know God wants to take you. And so we ask you to try Jesus and try St. Stephen's, uh, which means that God is speaking and he's speaking clearly. And all that's required of you today is a yes. 
And as you begin to think about all of the yeses that God deserves from you, there's a yes that you also should be giving through your giving. You need to give unto the Lord. He's been good. He's been a mighty good God. And we show our love, we show our trust, and we show our belief in the Lord by what we give unto the Lord. And so I'm praying today that you are willing to trust the Lord enough to trust his word and give according to his word. And that you might be a tither, meaning 10% of everything that you receive, you give unto the Lord. And as you come into uh, this time, the Bible says, as you give, I'm giving it back to you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. So much so that you will not have room enough to receive it. And I pray that blessing over your life. Uh, and that blessing indeed is yours and it has your name on it because God has already provided you with the resources to get the blessing. You just have to trust God enough to give it to him. And so I'm praying for your giving. I'm praying you would stop right now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whenever you get paid and you would stop and give. You can give by mailing it to the church. 1601 Old Eastern Avenue. You can give by giving online, ssame.org and go to the e-giving link. Or you can text the give, 844-334-1180. Whenever you get the money, whenever you get it, you can give it. If you're in the sanctuary, you can give in the tithing boxes. Uh, and so we pray, no matter what, that you would indeed be faithful. We need you to be faithful to the word so you can be fruitful. So that the kingdom can indeed prosper because of the shepherds uh, that are indeed shepherding the attachments that come from being obedient to the word of the Lord. And so we understand that this experience is not enough to bring all, all the fruit that should be happening. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, we got together daily and then the Lord added to us daily. And so we enter into the daily pursuit every day and we start at 7 o'clock every morning uh, and we have devotions at 7 a.m. with all of the 20 ministers that we have on staff. Uh, they rotate through giving us devotions and help us to worship, pray us into the morning and give us a word for our day. And then we stop at 7.30 and we get our day started and then we start back over at 12 and we spend the noonday hour in the presence of the Lord walking and talking through life and then we come back at evening time at 8 o'clock and pray ourselves through so that we might indeed uh, be ready for the morning and so on Wednesdays we stop for teaching and we're trying to help everybody understand what it means to understand your ministry as a shepherd. And so as we go forth, we look forward to you joining us if you have questions about that. After you come to all that we're trying to do to help you to become a shepherd, to the shepherd's table, that we might begin to talk about it a little bit more, that you and everybody attached to us might understand what it means to discern the voice of God, be obedient to that voice, so that we might have the attachments that we can shepherd. And so I look forward to God blessing you uh, with that opportunity as you're obedient to his voice and join the daily pursuit. Uh, and so as we navigate our way to the Lenten season, I'm getting excited about what God is about to do. And so as we enter into the Lenten season, I really need everybody to start trying to discern what God is telling you to do. Because what we're going to challenge you to do as we enter into the Lenten season is to make sure that for those 40 days and 40 nights, whatever it is that God is telling me to do, that I am going to do everything I can to accomplish that, which is going to then teach you what you should do to pray, what you should do to fast, what you should do to read your Bible. You're going to need to do all of that to accomplish the task. Uh, but you need to first discern what God is asking you to do. And so we'll talk more about that in days yet to come. But get ready to be fruitful come Easter Sunday. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. May the Lord bless you real good. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present your faultless before his Father, which is in heaven to him. 
be glory, dominion, and power now and forevermore. And the people of God opened up their God-given lips and said, Amen. Try St. Stephen's Try Jesus And try St. Stephen's Try